Hey there guys, Ichek from Shetek here, bringing you another streaming tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to show you a really simple way, which is actually free, a free method of turning any of your DSLR cameras, mirrorless cameras, into a webcam. So if you're looking to maybe, maybe you already own a DSLR camera, a mirrorless camera, and you're wondering, do I need to buy a webcam? Can I use these for streaming? I'm going to show you how um, it will be free without using Elgato's cam link, just using a simple free software. Let's get right into this. First thing you want to do is you want to be able to you want to have most DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras have a proprietary USB connection. Now, um, for example, this is the Nikon D3200. Um, it uses a micro, a mini USB um, connection. So you need a mini USB cable um, with a mini USB to full size USB um, cable. Uh, these can be usually found with phone charging cables and usually actually come with the camera itself. What you want to do is you take your camera plug it into its uh, designated socket, good as gold. And then what you want to do is take your camera, take the um, camera originally switched off, um, I find is easiest, take your propriety, uh, propriety USB side, plug it into your computer. So now that we've got the camera plugged in but we haven't turned it on yet, we're going to want to get that free software I was talking about before. So let's go to our browser here and what you want to go to is digicamcontrol.com. I'll put a link for that in the description below. Um, simply, it's a software that allows a live view of your camera. You're able to access camera settings if your mirrorless um, camera allows it. Um, you're able to access ISOs, aperture, all sorts of things. This is actually more useful um, as well outside of streaming um, for remote camera capture um, and for professionals that need a, a larger viewing platform. So we're going to click download. So oh, simple and it's absolutely free. We don't need um, the other alpha version. Just grab the download version. Um, the, I mean the, the stable version. Download it. Um, install it. It's a .exe file and once you've done that you'll get a, a program available for you. Digicam control. You'll have it as an app. Um, what you want to do is click it. Open it. Open. Um, so this is an open source project. Um, it is an open source project. Feel free to donate. I think it's a really good program. So, help them out. Location will look like this. So this is the main digi digi the digicam mini digicam control um, dashboard here. You have a variety of uh, options here: capture photo, live view, download photos, etc., etc. Now you're able to see this. So we haven't switched on the camera here, so it hasn't recognized what it is. Uh, your camera should actually um, pop up here. So here I have my webcam, and it should appear in here as the name of your camera. Um, when it's recognized by the computer. So now to get it recognized in the software, what you want to do is switch on your camera. By the switch, remember keeping it still plugged into a computer, just switch it on. Take a little while. As you can see, it automatically recognized it as a camera. Um, like I said, new camera recognized. Um, you may notice some, sometimes there's an issue that some of the cameras are recognized as a uh, storage device um, we don't want this so if you need for the help in trying to make it recognized as a camera comment down below and I'll see what I can do about that but you want it to be recognized as a camera on your computer now that we have all the setting you can't actually see a live preview yet you see all our settings in the camera it's pretty cool you're able to access ISO settings um, shutter speeds white balancing whatever etc etc so what you want to do is you want to click the live view LV um, click that button your camera will make a shutter sound and whoa we're on the screen um, we're live here so we've got ourselves on the screen now hey guys um, and what you're able to do is you can do an autofocus so you can use the cameras autofocus um, do whatever you want you can even capture video you can do all sorts of a variety of things on the screen um, what we want to do so that it's suitable for a streaming service so I'm showing you this is how to be used for Streamlabs OBS and whatnot to set it up for that simply what you're going to want to do is autofocus first Make sure you're happy with the focusing um, area that you're there in. You want to click this button here. This is full screen mode. Now what it will do is it will create a full screen um, video here and then you can make it a small window again by clicking that top button. You can resize this window um, really simply. Uh, make it as small as you want. Cool. And so what we'll do is we'll minimize that. We'll minimize this. 
and I have already created a new tutorial scene for us so we can play around with this so remember this is from DigiControl this is a uh, full uh, this is their full screen mode um, per se of the live view from your camera so now what we want to do is go into our Streamlabs OBS Let's make this bigger put this to the side I'll make this smaller and what you want to do is add a source now what we're gonna do for this example is we're gonna do a window capture you're gonna go add source in Streamlabs OBS add a new source we're gonna call it uh, test camera add source uh, we're gonna choose this live view from camera control so live view d3200 da, 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 some extra number um, this number actually stays the same which is really cool um, every time you turn on that live view feature uh, I'm going to turn off capture cursor, capture cursor off so we don't see our mouse going over the live view uh, done and then as you can see it's actually we've already got it in our scene so this is in Streamlabs OBS so now if I drag away our that uh, digi control live view you can see now in our scene we have the video um, you can do whatever you want with this you can manipulate it now you see these annoying gray bars you see these annoying uh, these annoying uh, exit button and the maximize button to fix this what I found is that you can just stretch these out make that disappear um, as you can see in the scene it's gone and then what you want to do is you want to right click on here you want to go transform uh, you want to go edit transform and then in the crop left and right so remember you only have to do this once so once you've got your scene sussed and once you've got that set um, you can just um, every time you connect your camera you just click on that same scene and it should um, keep the same crops and sizes so we're just going to add a crop on here maybe 200 no, that's a bit too much maybe 180 on the left um, 180 on the right and as you can see we've got rid of those already of course is a rough job make sure you tidy it up yourselves quite well you would resize this position this any way you want you can take it and um, flip horizontal make it look like you know, you're looking into the camera zone wherever you want etc that's really awesome and yeah so now you have your screen there I'll add something else in there so you can it will make it look like we're doing something so I'll just add our display capture I'll add this as a source cool bring it drag it down below BAM as you can see we have our camera here be able to drag it about put it wherever we want resize it etc and all it's doing is pulling it from the live view from digicam control um, which is really awesome and so that's a really simple um, simple tool to use um, simply to then stop the uh, live view or the camera being used up there uh, you can just exit out of this uh, you get back in here back into the original um, live view scene exit out of that you'll hear your camera shutter close that means it's not being used anymore um, one of the some cool features in this is um, to pay attention to is the battery life 100 so now this battery um, bar is actually signifying the uh, amount of battery that is internally available in your camera um, one of the things you need to note as opposed to using a regular webcam is a lot of the older cameras uh, use an internal battery so you're kind of relying you're reliant on that battery and its lifetime unless you're able to get a direct power source to the camera as well which is cool and yeah and then that pretty much draws us to the conclusion of the tutorial hopefully that was helpful for you um, any questions uh, feel free to drop them down below uh, feel free to drop them down below in the comments I'll be ha happy to answer any questions any clarifications required I'll put all the links down below as well for the softwares used I'll also put some alternative softwares there there's things such as Sparko cam which is um, also really helpful for um, Canon uses um, this is a similar pro program there's a plug-and-play um, as well that should work uh, feel free to check out my twitch that's some entertaining stuff um, yo, 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 y
Thank you very much for watching. Hope everyone has a great day. Eyeball one. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace. We're locked in. Yo, 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 y